name is Jakob Ahmed. I'm from London, uh, born and raised in London. I came to Turkey to teach Ottoman history. I've been living in Istanbul now for seven years, I would say. So my mother is from Pakistan. My father is from Uganda. Pakistani culture, my mum's culture was very dominant in the house. I could have um, found or tried to find a job in the European or Western market. But Turkey was very attractive to me at the time. It was. Um, it was a Muslim country. The Ottoman archives are here. I made friends here. I had some challenges growing up in London regarding racism and then Islamophobia. And I thought to myself, well, you know, why don't I go to a Muslim country and teach there? For my family, initially there was a shock and disappointment. They migrated to London to give their children a better opportunity in life. And then for me to tell my parents that I wanted to leave London, um, it wasn't that I was coming to Turkey, that wasn't the problem. The problem was I wanted to leave London and that was initially a surprise for them. And I remember when my parents, they came to Turkey, their attitude changed straight away. I still remember my father, he was staying in my house in Uskudar and it was in the morning and he was just standing at the window and I said, what are you doing? He goes, the, I can hear the azan. And I just smiled and I said, yeah, of course. And that was the trade-off. The trade-off was, yes, maybe I could make more money in England and maybe I could have different types of opportunities, but, but you can't. I, I don't think sometimes people even in Turkey appreciate like, how much that means to us, <laughs> because we don't hear it. But everyone says, ah, if you know the word chatpak, Ozaban, send Turkey Briosons. I say, yok, yok, bil mi yorum. Gerçekten bil mi yorum. Şatpat konuşuyorum da çünkü çok yavaş düşünüyorum yani. In English and in Arabic, the verbs are at the beginning. So we know straight away what's happening. In Turkey, it's at the end. So like, I used to wait, like, ne oldu yani. And you know, on many occasions, um, I used to speak to people, they would shout. So, and I said, no, I'm not deaf. Just can you yavaş yavaş konuşabilir misiniz? So that used to be funny for me at times. How are you, ne var you? I, Pardon, şey, bu İngilizce mi, Türkçe mi? Yani, an anlamadım yani, bu ne? And he was going, Yakub, yani, how are you, ne var you? And he was saying it with confidence. Like, how are you, ne var you? Şey. So then I had to like really ask my friends, like somebody said, how are you, ne var you? Like, well, what is that? And he said, that's his polite way of saying, how are you, Yakub? People never say, bil mi yorum. Olmaz yani, they never say it. So I would say, for example, Fatih Cami nerede? Okay? They wouldn't say Bilmi Yorum Hocam. They would say, Tamam, Yani Hocam Duzgit. So I learned that in Turkey, if someone says Duzgit, that means Bilmi Yorum. Because if they know, they say Sal Git, Ondan Sonan Sol, Sal, Yuz Mitre, like this. There's a lot of Amdas and Tezas that take buses in Istanbul. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. So I've learned that if you go in the front, forget it. You're going to sit down, one second someone's going to come. Just look, you have to get up. So then I used to go right at the back and sit right at the back so that because the, the Amjas they don't come that far. But sometimes when they're coming that far, you can see everybody is just looking like and the young people are bad, you know, because they look down on the floor. Like I yeah yeah. And then we the middle-aged people, we have to stand. So in Pakistani culture, when you're someone gives you food, you finish the food to show that you like the food. I went to my friend's house, I didn't know that in their culture here. If you finish the food, you're still hungry. So now we had a situation. They kept bringing food, I kept finishing the food. They kept bringing the food, I kept finishing the food. And then his mum, she calls him in the kitchen. She goes, this guy, he's, he's, he's, he's, he keeps eating, he's still hungry. Yani. So he calls me, because goes, you're still hungry. I said, hi, yeah, I'm done, like, stop. Yani. Um, so these were the moments where you notice those small differences. So the three questions I get in this country all the time. Are you Muslim? Are you married? Are you Hanafi? All the time, no matter where I go, they'll look at me and go, are you Muslim? Every time. Are you married? And I'm thinking, why are they asking if I'm married? And this is the number one question. They're asking all the time, then they ask if I'm Hanafi. And I always laugh. I never used to understand that. I understand it now. Uh, and when people are saying to me, where are you from? So in England, if someone said that to you, where are you from? You would take offense to that. But not in Turkey, because everybody's asking, you, you understand that, they're actually trying to understand you by trying to understand where you're from. Because in the Ottoman period, you'd say like, Tokat la Mustafa Sabri Efendi. So he's from Tokat. 
or El Melala Hamdi Azza. You see, you, you know from the places where somebody is from. And that was important for identity and it stayed in Turkey. Yeah. That it's, it's, a, it's a way of showing that I'm from this town. And um, I think that's great. I mean, when growing up, people say things like British culture, British identity. That was very hard for me because my mum was from one country, my father was from another country, and then I was born in England. When I was younger, I tried very hard to fit in. I wanted to be English, I was watching English football matches, but I wasn't white. It was never going to happen. Um, and the discrimination was tough for me. It, it did create an identity crisis. So we didn't have initially Islamophobia. That, that was a, a phenomena that happens after 9-11. But prior, before that, the, the, the tensions were racial. Um, you had racism in school, racism on the street. I've been chased by people, I've been attacked by people. That was, and you know what's interesting is my f parents also had that racism. But for them, it was like, we're in a foreign country, we just got to accept it. But, but I was raised in the country and I was trying to be British and I didn't have another identity. So for me, that was very traumatic to I try to understand. So the very thing you're trying to be a part of is the thing that's attacking you. So it becomes difficult to make sense of that. I've got racism in other parts of the world, including here, but it's ignorance, it's clear. But over there, it's in the system. It, it has a colonial heritage. They, they, they colonized countries. So they understood how to treat you differently because it's a hierarchy, but you f they make it look like that you are getting some form of privilege. And that is very confusing uh, for your sensibilities. So most people, when foreigners come to England, they're looking for obvious racism. That's not to say there weren't many good moments in the country. I mean, England is still very unique, but you've asked me the question of that, and, and that is something that it did shape my thinking when coming here. People, they ask me like, well, why are you here? I, I get this question often. Why are you still in this country? What are you doing here? Why don't you leave? And I say to them, no, because it's the everyday interactions that make me want to stay here. One time I was in Altuna Zade in Uskoda, it was raining, and an Amja just said, get in the car, where are you going? And just took me to my destination. I remember a young guy was on a motorbike, just says, get on, put on the helmet, let me take you. And those sort of moments, I've, I've never experienced that in London. So um, and that's the Islamic culture. You know, when I've been to Turkish homes and villages, it doesn't feel strange because there's a warmth. You sit down, there's a, you want some chai. And it's very human, very quickly. And you feel connected straight away. And I think that's what I found interesting. Yes, okay, that is an Islamic culture, but it, what I mean is that in Europe is not there. In Turkey, for example, I can go to a Turkish person's house and just go, I'm hungry. That doesn't sound like a crazy thing to say. Ah, tamam, no problem, Yaakov, we'll make you something. So it's this type of warmth, which, um, which um, I really miss when I go back to Europe. Because in Europe, everyone is distant. Yeah, this was the interesting thing.